Okay, now that we got everything all cleaned up and lubed up, um, now we gotta throw it back together. So, the number two check module, which is typically the, the bigger, uh, longer module, you can see, whoa, don't drop it. You can see that one of the modules is slightly longer than the other one, right? So the number two goes in first. So it's going to, so this is the number two shutoff valve. This is the number one shutoff valve with the number one TC right here. Um, so that's typically how you know, is if the ball valve has a tapped port so this is the number one shutoff valve. This is the number two shutoff valve. So this would be your number two slot right in here. So it basically just drops in. Let me put this one down. So it drops in, it goes in its slot there. And all you do is just guide it back until that O-ring seals in the body. So you just push. So that O-ring should seal in the body, nice and tight, and then you're ready for the number one module. So number one, it goes in this way. So the flow passes through the check body. So same thing, you're gonna just drop it in and slide it right in its groove. Right there. Then you have to make sure that that O-ring seals inside the body. So you'll you'll be able to feel with your finger when it's in there straight and that o-ring plops in so with these smaller devices it will take some a little bit of time to find the right and then once you get it you'll feel it going smooth and flush and this if you think you got it in there smooth and flush the check holder is going to so this tip is going to be up top this will tell you if you don't have it in smooth because when you drop this in, it will, the number one check module, if it's not in there all the way, it will stop this check holder from going in. So typically it should just fall right in like that. So if you have it up and you get it into position and you're trying to jam it in there, that means the one of the checks is sticking out further than it should be. So typically it should just fall right in there like that, boom. And then next is the spring. So this is the metal seat for the relief valve disc to seal on there. So you wanna make sure that's super clean. Um, so typically you can feel with your finger if there's any nicks or grooves in it. Um, or just take a rag and you can just wipe it away and make sure it's clear of debris and anything else. Uh, okay, and then the next step is your spring. It's gonna sit right on the disc. Make sure it comes out as straight as possible from that seat. Sometimes the, you can spin it and it'll straighten itself out. Um, but most of the time, once the stem is in there, it'll guide it straight up and down. And then the last thing is the lid with the RV. So you got this boy. You're gonna basically just flip it over and guide it with that spring. So it's gonna go right in the spring. Like that. Right. Um, the air, air hole, um, bleed hole, I typically like to point it towards the serial number. Um, it doesn't really, it's not really directional, so you could have it towards the, um, the number one ball valve, so it bleeds air out that way, or you can have it towards the number four TC, towards the number two ball valve. And from there, you just put in your bolts and zip it tight. And you wanna do an equal compression on that spring. 
So when you're zipping it tight, if you're getting all cockeyed, it's going to snap the RV fin guide that's coming through here. So you wanna, when you're, when you're tightening it down, you wanna do it by hand first and feel the RV guide go through the seat and then uh, tighten it all with the same pressure on each side. Otherwise you'll, you'll end up tipping it back and forth.